Hey, welcome back everyone. We're here live, day two of Percona Live. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. I'm John Furry, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by co-host Jeff Frick with Silicon Angle Network. Jeff, uh, day two for Percona Live. Uh, last night uh, we had, uh, yesterday we had Percona Live day one, uh, now day two, but last night we went up to San Francisco for uh, sports, data SB, our, our special presentation with the San Francisco Giants. San Jose Sharks, San Jose Earthquakes, uh, and the San Francisco 49ers talking sports and big data. And uh, great event, and we'll talk through that a little bit today. But, but, but you can't have big data without storing it somewhere. So uh, you know, the MySQL world is under a lot of pressure uh, to scale. The, uh, the LAMP stack revolution is changing into the multi-stack revolution. A lot of tools out there, a lot of, big, a lot of things with cloud. Um, what's your take of, of yesterday here at Percona, and sports data SV, and here day two, has it all tied together? Well, I think what's great, John, about the Cube is we go to these variety of events and we really cover the entire, not the LAMP stack, but kind of the tech athlete stack, if you will. And we spend a lot of time with practitioners and the tech athletes that are creating the, the technology, developing the technology, founders of Hadoop, et cetera. Now here at the open source, uh, one of the earlier open source components with MySQL, and we'll get back into the weeds uh, here today with some of the technology aspects. But then yesterday we were out at Sports Data SV talking really to the practitioners, and not even in the, the tech industry per se, but with the Giants, the Niners, the earthquakes and the sharks, and thank you uh, gentlemen for coming last night. But it was really fun to see how people are putting these technologies into play from the perspective of, we just want to deliver a better fan experience, we want to deliver more value to our clients. And again, I thought what was really provocative last night was in the Giants mission statement that's on the plaque as you walk in the executive office, the first uh, attribute of their mission statement is innovation. So I think, you know, we continue to uh, to see innovation, ways to innovate, how open source is, is changing the innovation landscape. And to me, I think that's exciting. And and, I'm, and uh, now we get down back into the weeds and, and how the speeds and feeds all work. Yeah, one of the things that came out of that um, executive event we had last night with sports teams was 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 fun. Was you know, obviously we love sports. We love to talk about the Giants and the Niners. Um, but it's really they're like any other enterprise out there. They have business objectives, and what's surprising. Uh, to me is how deep they have a development team out in each organization. So if you look at the Giants, for instance, you mentioned innovation. You know, their IT and development focus is deep, and they use data, and there's a competitive advantage. And we talked yesterday about LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and others using you know, web scale SQL as an initiative, uh, as, as a as pressure to scale up you know, SQL, because they're using data as a competitive advantage. It's part of their core value proposition, their application. That's the same with the sports teams. And I think that's consistent with the enterprises, where you're going to see more and more of the, the data first strategy where it's all about, okay, let's engineer around, okay, what we got and what do we have for data? And that's what the Giants have done. That's what we're hearing with the earthquakes and certainly the Niners. I mean, they're going to be able to tell you when the bathroom lines are, are long or short uh, and every instant replay, five seconds to your mobile device is impressive. So, so, so what that means is, is that the development community is going to be under more pressure to scale out of the box. And that is take it to, uh, as I said, with SQL, it's always had that glass ceiling of performance. And you see Mongo and Cassandra, things like that, push the envelope. But still, I think with Mongo, they've had great success, but they've always had that glass ceiling of scale that no one's ever talked about. I think people engineer around it and you know push buttons and, and wire things to make it work, but it's truly not scalable. But they have had replication and high availability out of the box. And I think MySQL needs to come to that direction. That's the buzz here and ultimately enabling developers for DevOps, for application development, so that folks like the Giants, like large enterprises, whether it's bank, retail, oil and gas, whatever you want to call it, can integrate into this multi-platform environment. So that's really what's going on here at Pocona Live, and there's a lot at risk. You know, MySQL has huge popularity. A quarter of the developers, hundreds of thousands of people using MySQL and developing on it. So it's not like a bit player in the database business. It's really the real deal. So well, how this evolves is interesting. And the role Oracle plays is also yes. interesting. <laughs> yes. So, you know, Oracle's earnings are up, 52 week high, and uh, you know, we were kicking Oracle side of the street four years ago, really, really hammering them about, you know, innovation. I call them the telco of, uh, of, the, of the tech business, really extracting rents and really kind of the bad actor. You're just sitting there just monopolizing the, the, the monetization. But now we're in a build mode, build, monetize, build, deploy, monetize, it seems to be the mantra. So it's good news for Oracle. And I think 
if they can just keep everyone kind of tightened up and not try to control it, I think we're going to see some good things. Yeah, and, and Larry's shown he can turn that ship pretty quickly for a big organization when you've got basically one guy at the top that's making all the decisions. And they make their moves and they move aggressively when they do make their moves. The other piece I think that came out last night that I think is, is interesting that I think a lot of people think about is this, this concept of the citizen developer and how much uh, internal development is being done at all these different companies using really the component uh, kind of assembly process. And I think uh, Bill Schlau last night talked about one of his guys on his team that they can't develop applications fast enough for this guy. He just continued to figure out new ways uh, to get more data, build more applications, and test things. The other thing is he said, you know, that really the innovation uh, only gives you a couple year window of sustainable advantage. There is no long term sustainable advantage. The only way that you can do that is through innovation. The only way you can innovate is to try things. And I think, you know, that's part of the secret, I think, of Silicon Valley is people are not afraid to try. There's no real uh, black mark if you fail. Just fail fast and move to the next thing. And, and I think that's part of what's really exciting about this time that we're in today, uh, that everyone is developing. They're building applications. The data is the asset. How fast can you collect it? How innovative can you be in ways to use it to get that short-term competitive advantage over your competition because they're going to be right there behind you. So it's, it's good stuff. Okay, we'll be right back with our, our first guest here in day two live coverage of theCUBE, our flagship program, Go Out the Advanced Extracted Signal from Noise. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We'll be right back.